Hello, my name is Suresh Chari. I'm a gastroenterologist uh, practicing in the United States at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. I'm very pleased to be here as part of the uh, third summit on diabetes uh, arranged uh, by the uh, Chalaram Diabetes Institute. Uh, it's, I've been uh, to the inaugural summit uh, three years ago, and it's been wonderful to see the growth uh, in the uh, conference and the, uh, the academic content that's presented here. Um, I am very pleased to see the work that is being done at the Chalaram Diabetes Institute uh, in terms of the uh, clinical practice, the outreach to the villages, uh, as well as uh, in education of the patient, as well as uh, the conferences that are being held and the other uh, modalities that are being used to educate physicians and patients about uh, diabetes and its management. Um, my own uh, area of expertise is in, in pancreatic diseases uh, affecting the, uh, the, the pancreas, and uh, I spoke on the uh, effect of uh, diabetes on pancreatic function, uh, as well as the uh, connection between diabetes and pancreatitis. Um, the type 1 and type 2 diabetes do affect uh, the exocrine pancreatic function, but not uh, severely enough to require pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy. Uh, however, if you do testing for exocrine pancreatic function, such as measuring fecal elastase or fecal chymotrypsin, one might see some uh, abnormalities in these test results, but uh, these do not require treatment as these are not affecting the ability of the pancreas to digest uh, food. Uh, when we measure fecal fat in these patients, they are generally normal. So uh, we do not recommend uh, treatment of uh, exocrine function in type 1 or type 2 diabetes with pancreatic enzyme replacement. However, if you have chronic pancreatitis or you've had pancreatic surgery, you might actually have significant decrease in pancreatic function that uh, might affect your ability to digest your food. Uh, in that case, you do need a pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy. Uh, the symptoms of uh, pancreatic insufficiency are diarrhea and weight loss uh, and uh, the uh, way to test for it is with measurement of fecal chymotrypsin or fecal elastase. These are fairly severely reduced in the setting of uh, uh, inability to digest food. Uh, but uh, another surrogate marker of uh, malabsorption is uh, measuring uh, vitamin A and E levels in the blood. Uh, these would be affected uh, if there was a prolonged maldigestion. Finally, the uh, implications of maldigestion long-term are that the bone health is affected and patients may have fractures uh, from uh, poor absorption of uh, fat-soluble vitamins and, and uh, vitamin D especially. Um, so in these patients, one would need to be uh, supplementing their uh, food with uh, pancreatic enzymes. Uh, my suggestion would be to distribute the calories through the day by taking uh, four to five meals a day, which are smaller, and distributing the enzymes through the meal by taking uh, uh, smaller pills, but um, distributing them through the meal. Uh, additionally, one could uh, take uh, acid blockers such as uh, S2 receptor antagonists or proton pump inhibitors that uh, additionally uh, help with the, uh, uh, maintaining the lipolytic activity of the uh, enzymes taken by uh, mouth. Uh, with these efforts, uh, one can manage uh, pancreatic uh, insufficiency uh, and maintain the, uh, the digestion uh, and eventually uh, the um, effects on uh, bone health. 
Um, the other uh, topic that I spoke on was on the connection between uh, diabetes and pancreatitis. Uh, there is an increased risk of pancreatitis in patients with diabetes, but the confusion arises when the patient is on uh, GLP-1 agonists, which cause a rise in amylase and lipase levels without causing uh, pancreatitis. Uh, nearly 25% of patients with, uh, uh, with on these medications will, will see an elevation in amylase and lipase. Uh, this makes it harder to diagnose pancreatitis in these patients. Uh, one might have to do an ultrasound or uh, cross-sectional imaging such as CT in order to diagnose pancreatitis in these patients if they have severe abdominal pain. Uh, the other confusion arises from fibrosis that occurs in the pancreas in patients with uh, long-standing diabetes. Uh, this can cause confusion uh, if an endoscopic ultrasound is done for abdominal pain. Uh, the endoscopic ultrasound might detect changes in the pancreas that could be misinterpreted as chronic pancreatitis. This is because the fibrosis in the pancreas in chronic pancreatitis and in diabetes uh, uh, would look alike uh, on endoscopic ultrasound. And this confusion um, can be very difficult to resolve in a patient who's got upper abdominal pain. Um, we currently do not have any good uh, tests to be able to differentiate uh, the two. Uh, unless there are changes in, on CT scan or MRI that are more definitive of chronic pancreatitis, such as uh, calcifications or uh, ductal dilatation or pancreatic atrophy. If these changes are not present, uh, differentiating the two can be difficult. Um, the uh, other area of, of discussion was on the effect of high triglycerides on amylase levels um, in the setting of pancreatitis. A hypertriglyceridemia does predispose to pancreatitis, but amylase levels can be falsely low in this setting. Um, modern labs nowadays uh, know to uh, dilute the sample and measure amylase in the setting of uh, high triglyceride levels. So hopefully this is not a major issue at this time. Um, patients with hypertriglyceridemic pancreatitis can have a more severe form of pancreatitis uh, and uh, this should be managed uh, uh, with uh, management of the diabetes that is often present in these patients. Um, finally, we discussed uh, the effect of uh, pancreatitis on long-term incidence of, of diabetes. There have been recent uh, meta-analysis of prospective studies which have shown that uh, patients with, di with pancreatitis, uh, even mild pancreatitis, tend to have a higher risk of getting diabetes uh, in subsequent years, even after a recovery of the structural changes that are seen during acute pancreatitis. Um, the uh, patients with mild acute pancreatitis structurally um, uh, resolve their changes and, and the pancreas looks normal on subsequent imaging. However, there could be uh, a loss of beta cells in these patients, uh, which may predispose them to a decreased uh, beta cell mass and subsequent uh, development of diabetes uh, due to reduced mass. Uh, this is an active area of investigation, um, and it's not entirely clear what the mechanism of increased risk of diabetes in these patients is. Thank you.